So welcome to the Unicon Open Source Support Briefing for Student Success Plan. Uh, my name is Craig Harry. I'm a senior project manager at Unicon, and I've been working um, on the SSP project now for about three to four years. Um, this is our briefing. We do these um, annually, generally speaking. Once in a while, we'll do them twice a year, and it's the idea is just to give um, all the users of SSP an update on what is going on, um, things that they may need to be aware of or concerned about or uh, just of interest to them overall um, regarding the SSP application. So our agenda for the meeting today is we'll go through a community update. I'll give you a sustaining engineering update. We'll talk a little bit about the roadmap, uh, some of the ideas that we have um, or that we've talked to uh, various users about. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to Mike Sulzberger, who's our lead developer on SSP. He'll talk about uh, some items that we have already or in the process of developing for the 2.9 version. And then uh, we'll have a question and answer period after that. So first for the community update, uh, we always include some helpful links here just for posterity's sake uh, to drive people to the uh, Aperio wiki site um, for SSP. So the homepage will get you um, anywhere you need to go at the wiki.jsig.org page. Then we use a public JIRA instance to manage bugs, uh, feature requests, improvements, and other things. Uh, there's a link from that on the home page and then a link here, as you can see. And again, that's public. Uh, anyone can go in. Um, so any of the tickets that are referenced here, you can log in uh, or just access JIRA and actually see the details on any of those tickets. We've got a section for um, installation notes and uh, other documentation there. And then we always recommend that people join the Aperio email list to keep up to date on anything that's going on in the community. So these are just helpful links that uh, we like to share. And if you any of our interest, um, please feel free to look at any of those sites. Another question that's common is, uh, what version should I be running? Currently, the latest released version is 2.8. Uh, we don't recommend anything currently earlier than version 2.7.1 uh, due to various security and feature upgrades, as well as a number of bug fixes. Um, any future upgrade, there really isn't any reason uh, that we've ever heard of why you shouldn't upgrade to the latest available version, which is 2.8x. So we have a number of patches for different bugs and things that have been reported uh, since the 2.8 release. Since the 2.7 release, we've done over 40 patches and over 20 improvements, and those are included in the documentation links that I showed on the previous slide. Any future feature ads, so any new development by Unicon or um, client-side development is only going to be to the 2.8 branch. Um, we're only updating earlier than 2.8 down to 2.7 for any security patches. One of the things that we wanted to highlight are some quality assurance or QA improvements uh, that we made since the 2.8 release. The 2.8 release now is a bit over a year old. It was released um, mid to late January last year. And um, one of the things that we've done is, is we've brought on board some of the quality assurance team um, that is at Unicon, and we have had them develop um, various scripts and automations to streamline and uh, more aggressively test different features and bug fixes, including full regression testing for all future releases. So everything now um, will take not only uh, unit and functional testing, but also be fully regression tested uh, before deployment. So that's something that's been implemented now. We're also prioritizing bug fixes when notified using the sustaining engineering hours then, that I'll talk about here in just a second. So um, a real big benefit now, I think, is bringing those QA resources on board to be able to 
fully regression test the application before anything is pushed out to the general public. Uh, I mentioned sustaining engineering, so I'll give you a sustaining engineering update. Uh, for those who may not know what sustaining engineering is, Unicon's open source support program supports our sustaining engineering program. So every uh, institution that is signed up uh, for open source support with SSP, Unicon effectively donates four hours of development time for each month for each customer. So currently we're accruing 37 hours a month. We do have one hosted customer, which accounts for the additional one hour there. So we're accruing 37 hours a month um, that Unicon essentially, which is it's essentially a full-time employee for one week each month. And we use those hours toward various priorities around SSP. So we accrue those hours. Um, we don't use it due to other priorities in some months. And at this point, by the end of 2018, we'll have over 500 hours sustaining engineering that will be dedicated to the 2.9 release. By comparison's sake, we had about 250 sustaining engineering hours dedicated to the 2.8 release, so over double for the 2.9 release. And again, these hours are used to address a mix of um, JIRA tickets and are highly open to client feedback. Uh, so for bug fixes, for new features, uh, which we'll talk about the roadmap here, and for improved usability, we'll also talk about um, some of the accessibility uh, changes that uh, we have on the roadmap and also changes that we've made um, already to the application in the area of accessibility. So we'll talk a little bit about the roadmap now. Three things specifically that uh, we'd like to bring to the everyone's attention. One of the big things that we work to address prior to the 2.8 release was accessibility issues. So we went through Unicon actually donated about 80 hours of time from a UX developer to go in and do a full accessibility review of the application. Um, every screen, both for an admin user and a, an advisor. And uh, from that report, we put together 10 JIRA tickets that can be uh, found there 3201 through 3210. And these are set to address all of the accessibility issues noted in that report. So we've completed kind of the low hanging fruit. So there was a number of items that were flagged in that review, dozens if not hundreds of very minor um, accessibility related tasks. So for the 2.9 or 2.8 release, excuse me, we went in and made all of those changes to the UI. Um, what's left are some higher level, a little bit more involved and more time consuming changes um, around framework, the SSP portlet, early alerts, my GPS, the reports, and the manage users portlets. So one of the things that we could use sustaining engineering hours, the, the 500 plus that I had just mentioned, is toward these types of accessibility related improvements. We're really looking for client feedback, um, the people that we talk to, the people, uh, the clients and institutions that are in the open source support program, as far as what their needs are around accessibility and how big of a priority this is to them. So definitely if this is something important to you or there's anything specific around accessibility, we'd be interested in hearing from you on uh, what we can do to uh, meet those needs. Next is the notification panel. So this is a new feature uh, as well as the next ticket that I'm going to cover. And um, these are us looking for ways to um, make the user interface and uh, an advisor in particular's interaction, since they're the heaviest users of SSP, obviously, easier and more streamlined and more efficient. So this feature would in some ways replace the emails that advisors are currently receiving um, for various tasks in SSP. Um, this would create a, an in-application UI that would display different notifications 
um, within SSP. So early alerts to system errors to any number of different things. Um, right now, you either have to go into SSP to get those alerts and, and fish around a little bit, or you have to check your email inbox. And so this would have, uh, this would be a place within SSP where you can go and receive all of those types of noti notifications. So again, as I mentioned just a minute ago, feedback on this, ideas around this um, are more than welcome from uh, users and others um, as far as how this can be built, what types of notifications, um, and even just overall the, uh, the benefit of having this type of feature. Okay, and the last kind of major item on our roadmap is the message queue. So this is, um, the details of this are in SSP 3180 is the JIRA ticket number. So there's an existing message queue. Uh, this would just add some improvements to that message queue to allow an advisor to resend emails, um, change the email message body and subject, so kind of customize an email, or uh, correct an email address. So this is a way to just enhance that message queue, make it a little bit more functional, because sometimes the data that SSP has is um, out of date or you know, there, there are other issues with different notifications that go out to students or others. And uh, this is a way to kind of see those and make changes to those very quickly and easily um, and be able to resend those emails or, or reroute them as necessary. So again, feedback on the benefits of this um, are appreciated. Now we'll move on to 2.9 highlights. Uh, so these are tasks that we are currently working on or have already in the can and ready for the 2.9 release. Um, we're not sure yet at this point when the 2.9 release will be ready. As you probably know, we don't have strict um, release dates and a lot of it depends on our ability to get through um, and utilize a lot of those sustaining engineering hours that I had mentioned earlier, the over 500 hours um, that are available. And a lot of that depends on the amount of work that uh, the developers have on other projects because usually sustaining engineering comes lower on the priority list than, than other, um, other clients' projects. So we're, we're kind of targeting end of this year. Um, we do have uh, some development projects with institutions in the pipeline currently, and we have a few others that are on the burner that um, may sign to get done within the next month to three months. Uh, and so we'd like to have all of those along with, again, the 500 hours um, included in the 2.9 release. So we're targeting uh, November, December this year. And uh, if you've got questions or um, want a more precise date, um, you know, maybe at, at back to school time or something, we probably would know a little bit more um, by that date. Uh, we already have a website or a section for the release notes for 2.9 that we are adding to as well as the data integration mapping. Um, so as we are completing projects that require SIS data integration, we're updating that mapping spreadsheet and we're also updating the release notes um, just to keep that as current as possible prior to the release. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and uh, he is going to talk through some of the current or past projects that we've completed since the 2.8 release that um, are currently scheduled to be released in the 2.9 release. Yeah, so as Craig um, said, I'm Mike Salzberger, the current uh, lead developer on the SSP project here at Unicom. And so we're going to just go through some of the features that we felt we should highlight for this briefing, uh, starting with this uh, first one where we've added a couple new map template statuses. Uh, gives the, the template admin the ability to further categorize some of the non-active templates. So we've added an obsolete and a deleted status. Obsolete would be only viewable to uh, anyone that has the map tool access, so pretty much anyone that has map 
tool. And deleted would be only available to the administrators or map template admins. That's the new features would be that we've added the ability to save with those, as you can see on the slide on the right. And when you're loading a template, you can filter out those statuses so you can find templates you know, that you're looking for. Next. Okay, so with this new feature, we've added to the journal step details report, the ability to further filter on the journal step details uh, by adding the journal source. So you can find journal step details that were set by appointment or that, that kind of uh, information. And we've also added it to the, the filter headers that are at the top of the report, as you can see there in the screenshots. Next. And so we did the same thing here with the journal case notes count report. Again, you can further uh, filter by the journal source. And again, we've added it to the top of the header. So if you've selected something, it will show up in the, in the header. So with this ticket, we've added another uh, print format or email format. So when you're sending an email to the student for uh, their map plan, or if you're printing the map plan, we've added this ability to print in like more of a grid format. It kind of looks more like a schedule. So just uh, another format that is more of a condensed or shortened version uh, that looks kind of a little easier to read it more like the map. And so here for map templates in a previous version of SSP, I, I believe it was 2.8, it may have been. Seven. I don't recall exactly. We added another descriptor for the template, and we call it a template tag. And we've gotten some feedback, and some of those institutions asked for us to make that template tag have multiple values. So you can see here in the screenshot at the bottom, I am saving this template tag with multiple, I'm sorry, I'm saving this template with multiple template tags. That template tags, I should add, uh, for those that aren't very familiar with template tags, te template tags, the idea was that you can, you know, just kind of loosely add just some more description to the template so that when you filter, there there is a now, in, when you load templates, you can filter on template tags. So if you, say you have a template tag that like kind of groups, say here are all your law enforcement templates, uh, it makes it a little easier to filter on those templates. Okay, next. Uh, so these are some of the features now that we're working on currently, and here we're, we're adding another descriptor for map plans and map templates. That is the uh, a transfer goal. So students that have a, have a goal, they come to a school and, and plan to transfer to another university, um, which you know, would be something fa fairly common at a community college we now have the ability to store with that plan or you know, if you're creating the template, you can store with that template the transfer goal. So there's an administration screen here in the left screenshot that allows that, uh, the admins to maintain those transfer goal schools. And then when you save a map, temp, uh, map template or map plan, there's a drop down that allows the uh, person saving to select that that school that the student would like to transfer to. Uh, it was also added to the custom CSV export. So when you print, uh, I'm sorry, when you uh, do the bulk custom export, when you're doing a search and you select map information, the transfer goal column will be added to that CSV. Next. And so some more work here we're doing on the map plan and template. We added another descriptor that allows for saving of map templates and map plans to indicate whether or not they were, it's a, say like partially complete. So a student may say comes into your office and the advisor's office and has not, you know, they, they start a plan, but it's not really complete. So the advisor could indicate that this plan is not, not fully complete. So, when then when you're searching, the 
advisor would be able to find those students uh, with, with partially complete plans. So we've added that as another search criteria uh, in, on the search screen. And again, we've added this partially complete indicator uh, to the custom export when you're doing a searching and click the bulk uh, custom export to CSV. Again, and when map information is selected. And that should be it. And did you want me to talk to these, Craig, or are you going to do this? Uh, if you could. Okay, so in addition to these enhan the enhancements we did, these are some of the bug fixes that we wanted to highlight. So there was uh, some deadlocking, database deadlocking that was occurring. It, it occurred with, uh, happened mostly when there was a schools that had very large data sets or numbers of students. And there was a, there's a few, or there was a SQL Server error where if, you, if there were more than 2,000 rows returned, uh, it was causing some, some uh, deadlocking issues. So we, we all we resolved all those, hopefully. And the next one, we made the school ID case insensitive. So when the person sync process runs, the, if the school ID was somehow case wasn't the same what we had in SSP that was in the external data, it still resolves the student correctly. I'm reading these because I don't remember all of them. Oh, yeah, so the, the special service group uh, notify advisor job that we have, it's a back-end job that uh, it, it sends an email out to the coach when the, I don't recall exactly, it notifies advisors um, that when the email was missing, it, the job was failing. So we resolved that. And there was a few cases where the program status was not being set properly and it was causing some issues that was happening in, internal to SSP. So we've, um, the add student process, we found a couple of places where we had to fix that and that's that next one. And the disability service report, there was, uh, it was, there was a bug on the screen that forced you to always pick an active start term. So uh, that's gonna be resolved in 2.9 and that should be it. Okay, thanks Mike. So that covers the presentation today. Uh, so we'll open up uh, the remaining time. We've got 30 minutes left on the schedule. Um, if anybody wants to come off mute and ask a question, uh, or you can utilize the Zoom chat window to type in a question and I'll reread it to the group. And then uh, myself or Mike or, or someone else will uh, answer that question. So any questions today? And instead of just questions, if you want to vote or a plus one any of the possible features um, that were on the roadmap, um, that would be great too. Like I said, we always like to get community uh, feedback and feedback from users on what features that we've kind of come up with um, will actually um, have an impact on uh, your day-to-day -day work. So I'll give everyone uh, another minute or two if you think of a question. You guys are letting us off easy today. Hey, Craig, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, it's Jim Simonson. Just wanted to let you know I appreciate all the work you're doing. I think things look good. I'm probably good with both of your enhancements, the notification features. I know having that capability would be helpful on there. And the only other thing I'd probably clarify in terms of the partial maps is just from our advisor standpoints, what happens is a student would walk in and they're like, I've got five minutes to meet with you, but I gotta get a uh, map started so that I can enroll this semester. If I don't have a map, I won't be able to enroll. Mm -hmm. So they'd set up a map for just one semester rather than using a full template and everything else. That was just basically the purpose for that. And then being able to find those folks so they can come back the next term and make sure they're mapped for the whole program. Right, thanks Jim. We've heard from uh, a couple other institutions that the, they really like the, the idea of the notification panel. So uh, that's definitely high on our list to um, look at um, once the developers free up and we can utilize some of those sustaining engineering hours. Okay, well, uh, thank you all for your participation and your time today. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I will distribute the slide deck along with uh, the recording via email. I'll, uh, I'll include the slide deck and I'll post a link where you can download the recording for um, 
either passing it along to other people at your institution or uh, uh, for future reference by yourself. Uh, so thanks again for your participation today. And again, if you ever have questions, concerns, um, anything else, uh, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, assist in any way I can. So thanks for your time today, and we'll talk to you soon.